Welcome to my guide to the CGP Set A Test for Maths paper. Number one, by estimating the value of 309.4 times 9.6, circle the correct answer. You don't have to do any calculation for this as it says estimate and there are obviously only three answers to choose from. Uh, what I would do is have a look at 309 and 9.6 and imagine what numbers are they close to roughly. Well, 309.4 is obviously close to around 300 and 9.6 is anywhere between 9 and 10. So if you were to multiply 300 by 10, you'd expect the answer to be somewhere in the range of 3000. So the nearest answer to 3000 would be this third one here, 2970.24. We can eliminate the other two because 4,000 is obviously too big. It's only 9 more than 300 and this is less than 10. So even if it was 309 multiplied by 10, you'd still be over 1,000 away from this answer. And this one's obviously too small. So that is your best one. Okay, number two. This is a nice and easy long multiplication example. 6 times 4, was, we always start with the units. It would be 24. So we put our 4 in, carry the 2. We move on to 4 times 3, which is 12. So 12 add 2 is 14. Put the 4 and put the 1 in there. Next, all we need to do is check that our calculation is correct for this section here. So they put the 0 as a placeholder. 2 times 6 would be 12. So you put the 2, they'd carry the 1 up there. 2 times 3 is 6. Add the 1 is 7. So that bit definitely works. All we've got to do now is add our answers we put in to 720. 4 add nothing is 4, 4 and 2 is 6, 1 and 7 is 8, so our answer is 864. Number 3, fill in the missing number in the calculation below. If you have good knowledge of dividing fractions, you should be able to spot a pattern here. There is an 8 at the bottom here and there is a 24 at the bottom there. All you need to do to turn 8 into 24s would be to times 8 by 3. Uh, seeing as we're working with fractions though, we need to divide by 3 because if we divide a fraction by a whole number, the denominator gets multiplied by that number. Number 4, shape S is translated plus 4 units horizontally and minus 6 units vertically. What are the coordinates of point A on the translated shape? So all we need to do here is find point A. Here it is. And at the moment it is minus 2, 2 if we were using the coordinates and we're going to move it four units horizontally. Now we could do that by working out the coordinates or we could just do it visually, which is what I'm going to do. First, we're going to move it four units horizontally. One, two, three, four. Just hold that for a second. And then minus six units vertically. So staying where we are, one, two, three, four, five, six. That would be its new point. So we read off the x-axis, two, and then the y-axis, minus four, so two, minus 4. Number 5, the parallelogram below is enlarged by a scale factor of 7. What is its new base length? Well, based on this one here, it's 11. So if it's got 7 times bigger, our answer would be 77. For the second part, it's asking you to do the inverse. So the enlarged parallelogram has a height of 630. What is the height of x on the original parallelogram? So we times that by 7. What we need to do is divide this new number by 7 to get the original value. So 630 divided by 7 is 90. However, it is in millimetres, but it does say leave your answer in centimetres. So we have 90 millimetres. A lot of people would get caught out by that. In order to turn that to centimetres, we need to divide that by 10. So 90 millimetres is 9 centimetres, the original value of x. Number six, it looks fairly complicated from the outset, but bear with me, it isn't as difficult as it looks. The number of days it takes to build a shed D is worked out using the formula D equals 7 plus 3R minus W, where R is the number of rainy days and W is the number of workers. If there are four rainy days and three workers, how many days will it take to build the shed? All we need to do is insert the numbers 4 and 3 into our equation that they've already given us. So D is the number we are trying to find. D equals 7 plus 3R. Now 3R means 3 times R. Now R is rainy days. We've been given 4 rainy days. So it's 7 plus 3 times 4, which is 12, minus W, which is the number of workers. So there are 3 workers. 
so that's minus 3. All we need to do now is solve D. So 12 minus 3 is 9, plus 7 is 16. So it will take 16 days to build the shed. Okay, number 7. Ralph owns red ties and blue ties. He has 36 ties in total. He has 3 times as many blue ties as red ties. How many blue ties does Ralph own? Okay, thinking about this question then. He has three times as many blue ties as he does red ties. So if you imagine, these 36 ties can be broken into four chunks. We have the first chunk, which is his red ties, and then he has three times as many blue ties. Okay, blue one, blue two, blue three. So these are four equal parts. So what we need to do is divide 36 ties by 4. 36 divided by 4 is 9. So each of these chunks is worth 9. He has 9 red, then he has 9, 18, 27 blue ties. Number 8. Five people at a guitar shop are asked how many guitars they own. The results are shown in the table below. The mean number of guitars is 4. So how many guitars does Ozzy own? Well, the mean is the average. And when we find out the mean, what we need to do is add up our total number of guitars and divide it by how many people there are. So in this case, there are five people that they asked. So we're going to have to have a number that when you divide by 5 makes 4. So straight away then our number needs to be 20 because 20 divided by 5 is 4. So having a look here then we have 6 plus 3 plus 1 which is 10 plus 5 for Gabby so we have 15 in total. So we need Ozzy to have 5 guitars so there are 20 in total and when we divide it by 5 the mean would be 4. So in this case Ozzy has 5 guitars. However, we do need to show some working out. So what I would do is add up the total. 6 plus 1 plus 3 plus 5 equals 15. 20 divided by 5 equals 4. Underline 20. So we need 5 more. So Aussie needs 5. So the answer is 5. I hope you found that video useful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate that. It goes a long way to helping me out. If you've got any questions, please leave a comment below and I'll hopefully see you in the next video. Thanks.